start my timer. Okay, welcome everybody to our digital literacy workshop and we're taking a break from Google Apps for Ed this week and looking at Edmodo. Um, so, uh, and there's a lot to cover. We can do more Edmodo sessions um, in the future, but uh, I'm going to try to uh, go through quite a few things today just to kind of give you an overview of what's available with, um, with Edmodo. If I say Google Docs, please forgive me. That's what's been on my brain lately. Okay, so you, I emailed you a doc, and I also um, put it in the chat window uh, with notes for today's meeting. And you guys um, are free to edit those notes if you'd like. I think I set them up that way. If not, let me know, and I can change that. And um, and that's it's got all the information about our evaluation that we'll do afterwards, and um, where you can find the archive and all that kind of good stuff. So for those of you who are new this week, just a, a few things about GoToMeeting. Uh, it's, it seems to be best to mute everybody and, um, and I talk, and then if you have something that you'd like to add to the group, if you'll write it in the ch chat window. Um, and if you want to say, I would like to talk, I have a great idea I want to share, please, um, please feel free, free to say that, and I can actually change the, the presenter so that you can, take, you, can, um, you can share if you'd like. Now, it is a pretty quick time, so um, it's kind of crazy that way, but if we don't get through everything, we can, uh, we can add another session that other day. And speaking of that, I wanted to, uh, this is at the very end of the slideshow, but I'm going to say it now. Next Monday, um, our digital literacy workshop, we're going to, um, we are going to spotlight a couple of teachers, or three teachers, uh, who are using Google Docs in the classroom. And uh, this is all going to be happening. This is a big thing. <laughs> but what we're going to do is, um, uh, Greg um, Dowd, who's a middle school teacher of social studies, and Ashley Moe, who um, teaches um, sixth grade at Centennial, and Jason Passamillo, Pas who teaches math at the high school, are all going to share how they are using Google Docs and their, in the apps in their classrooms. And we're going to do that all on our webinar, so you can join in. And our, um, all of our admin Team. So all of the administrators just happen to be having a meeting at that time. So they'll be joining in as well and hearing uh, all the great things that uh, these teachers and others are doing using Google Apps for Education. So I just wanted to get that in in case we run out of time. Uh, today we're just going to be looking at, like I said, the basics of Edmodo. We can go back and dive further in later and also in the notes there's some really good uh, resources for um, diving deep, deeper into the notes if, you, um, if you've got a question that's not answered here, which is probably going to happen because um, there's just not enough time. So, but basically um, that one here, this where to get help, really important to know. Um, and so make sure you pay attention to that part. So here we go. So here's our little Edmodo guide. And lots of you are using Edmodo in your classrooms already or um, as a part of professional development. It can be used both ways, and there are a number of ways that it can be uh, used. Um, so their mission, and I grabbed these slides right from Edmodo. Um, thank you, Edmodo. Um, Edmodo's mission is to connect all learners with the people and resources they need to reach their full potential. And there's some really cool things going on right now um, in classrooms and beyond. Um, Right now, we, are, we have teachers who are participating in a global read-aloud through Edmodo. And so they're connecting with classrooms around the world who are all reading the same book at the same time. And the kids are um, communicating via Edmodo about the book. And teachers are communicating with each other about um, different ways to connect. Some teachers are Skyping and some different things like that. But it's all connecting together in Edmodo. So that's one really cool uh, way that it's being used. So why Edmodo? It's engaging. Kids like it. It looks a lot like Facebook, which is exciting for them. 
Um, it's a way for teachers to connect with each other so that um, um, you can kind of extend your network outside of the teacher next door. Um, you can personalize it so um, you can make it fit your personal needs. There's a million different ways you can use Edmodo and a couple of those uh, links in the notes have some really good examples of some of the ways that it's being done. And then um, Edmodo also has some great features for uh, with quizzes and polls and assignments and you can keep track of how students are doing, and also just even discussions. So it's a good kind of way to keep that, that whole, everything in one place, all nicely packaged for you. It's also available um, on mobile devices as well. So um, it extends learning outside of the classroom. So we're going to, I'm looking over here, and, I, and I'm going to try to check the chat window and see if you have any questions. Right now, um, I don't see any questions, so I'm going to kind of power through here. This is this is a screenshot of the teacher homepage and some of the things that you'll see here. So um, teachers can create groups with the little plus button here. Oh, I wanted to say before I get to this part, sorry. In the notes, you can there's a link to how to actually create your um, Edmodo account. It's a little different than the generic one that Edmodo because um, we have we have a district account, so we're all under the Mount Vernon.edmodo.com. So I've included that in the notes. Basically, just when you start for the very first time, you need you need a school code, which is included in those notes. But once you're in, your page is going to look something like this, and you'll see. And I'm actually going to move over to my page. Easier for me to see than. Katie Roosevelt's page over here. So you'll see when you're in, um, um, there's a progress button here, and the progress button would be for you as a teacher to see how students are doing in different classes. Um, it's like a grade book. Um, you can discover different things that are happening. So here, if um, this is just stuff that they're um, telling you might be of interest to you. There's also communities here. So um, you'll see that the, there's communities for the different subject areas. And from there, you can connect with other teachers and get involved in different groups. Um, similar to communities is publishers. So if you're using it like uh, math investigations, you might find that in here. And you can find other teachers who are using the same tool and have those conversations. You'll see some, there's lots to see here. So I'm going to go back here. The library is huge. Okay. So in your library, you can store anything, which is really great. There's no uh, limit of space. There is a limit of how big a file can be to upload it. It's like 10 megabytes or something. But you can have as many files as you want, which is really nice. And then from that, you can create folders and share those folders with different groups. So that's really nice. And you'll notice here also that so everything that you attach to a post ends up in your library. You have these folders, and I'll look at the folders in a second. You can also have access to your Google Drive. So I didn't get away from today without talking about our Google Drive. So you can actually jump in and see all of your Google Drive documents right in um, here, and then you can open them or you can share them and that kind of thing. So that's pretty cool. Folders. You can create as many folders as you want and you can share them with different groups. I have a crazy one here. Okay, and then on notifications. Right now I, I'm seeing that I've got five new group members. That's exciting because we're working on getting people to join groups. Um, so five new group members. Um, it might say that seven students have turned in an assignment or that I have an event coming up and different things like that. Okay, and then I'm going to get out of here. And then you also, if, if you go to your profile, you'll see that you can earn badges, which some people really like to earn badges. And um, you can tell more information about yourself and like you can see I've got 173 items. I have 
35 teacher connections. I don't have very many students because um, I have mainly adults, other teachers in my groups. So there's all that. Um, what else? A really important thing to see is if you need help. Um, there's some great helps, helps over here that you can search. So if you've got a specific question, you can ask. Another place that you can get help, go back here. I see a question here from Jamie, so I'll get to that in just a second. Um, another great place to look for um, help is if you go down here in your communities where it says support. If you have a question and you ask it in this area, they will get back to you very quickly with an answer. So they're, they're very good about that. So um, if you can't figure out how something works, um, you can ask me. And usually what I do is I go and ask them. But you can ask me, and I'll ask them, or you can ask them yourself. So um, that's that. And then Jamie says, let's see, do you have to connect Google Drive to it, or is it just already linked? It will, if you're not already connected, like I was, so you didn't see this, it'll ask you if you want to connect your Google Drive, and then you can do that. And um, that's just your own personal, not every, not all the kids that are in your class and everything see what's in your Google Drive unless you share it with them. But it's, it is a place where you can access that stuff. And so, yeah, when you go into your library, you'll see, um, I'm in a student thing now. There we go. When you go into your library, you will see, and I have to move this back over here. forgot what I'm doing here for a second. Um, it'll say connect to Google Drive right here. And then you can just give it your, um, put in your information and it'll say Google is asking for permission to um, do this and you can say yes. Okay, get back to my slideshow. I went way off of my slideshow, that's okay. Um, moving on. So, um, you can create groups, so it's very easy to create a group. You just hit the little plus button, and you can call your group whatever you want. Um, teachers can have a group for each class. You could have one social studies group, and then you can have small groups within that of all your classes. There's lots of different ways to organize. I even saw groups being used, um, or small groups, I haven't talked to that part yet, but I even saw small groups being used like for weeks of the year. So they had one big group, and then the teacher had organized their content by week. So they had all these different groups, and they would assign the students by week. So they could kind of plan ahead that way. Student sign-up is very similar. Um, they don't have to have email to sign up. Um, what else? They, uh, the way that they sign up is they have a group code. So you've said, here's a class that I want you to join. And they put in that group code. And then they create their own username and password. I always suggest that they use their network login and password so it's easier for them to remember. And um, once they've done that, then if they've already got an account, like another teacher, you know, they've done it or they did it in another year, they will just go in just like you would as a teacher and click that plus button and put in the join code. And then they'd be a member of more than one class. I know I'm really flying through this stuff. There's just so much here. Um, it's, I think it's kind of interesting to see from the student side what it looks like. So this is, a, again, this is a screenshot of what a student sees. So they see who all their teachers are. They see progress. So they see if they've got any assignments that are due. Um, they see uh, these badges that teachers can um, award them for different things. They can set a career goal and um, answer these questions about what kind of learner they are. Um, you'll see, if you go, I'm going to pull up, hopefully, if I messed up here. So let's go. Um, I'm going to log in here. This is where it gets confusing for me. I'm logging in as my dog. <laughs>
And what I would suggest to you is if you have a dog, log them in as well. Now, um, I would suggest that you create a steering account so that you can go in and check on what things look like from the student side when you're working on your class. So create a student account and then um, attach that student account to a class that you, you have so you can go back and forth. So this is, this, as I said, is my dog and I see what it looks like as a student over here. So I have my groups that I've joined over here and then these are just posts from any of the groups I'm involved in. If I click on one of the classes, you'll see then I just see information from that one class and not all of the classes. I can see the members in my group. Um, I can see the post. If the teacher shared any folders, I can see the folders in there. Up here at the top, I can see my progress in the different classes. So, so far I have one assignment that I haven't turned in because I'm a dog. Um, and then they also have a backpack. In the backpack, they can put items that they create in so that they have them to access. Um, this is probably more, um, Google Drive is probably a better place to keep this kind of stuff, but um, they can do it in here too. So, um, and again, you'll see that they have access to their Google Drive. They can see what stuff they've turned into the teacher. Okay, back to my presentation. Getting close to the amount of time. Okay, so students, here's their home page. I kind of looked at that with my um, Holden page. There's also a parent sign up, and I don't know of many teachers who have been taking advantage of this, but if you go back and you look here, you'll see that on the student's page, they have a place that gives them a code for their parents to join. And then what parents will see, and teachers can give that code to parents too, but what parents will see when they log in, they'll use that code to log in. And then what they'll see is they can have all of their students, so if they've got more than one child that has an account, they see their children's um, grades and assignments and any conversation between the teacher and their student. They can talk to the teacher and they can talk to their own child, they can't talk to any other students. So they don't see the conversations among students and they can't have a conversation with just any student, but they can see the progress that their child is making. Um, so um, one more thing and then I think we're going to, um, there's a way to create small groups within your big group and that was what I was talking about earlier. That's my thing that says it's time to stop. Um, so I'm going to just fly through this very quickly and then save the, these things for another day, but just so you know that they're here. Um, different ways to use small groups. Um, and this shows how to post a message. When you're posting a message, you have to just, you have to share which group or which person you're sharing it with. You can share notes. You can share attachments of any kind, so a Word document or a link to a um, a link to a you are you know like to a web page. You can share um, videos, audio files, all kinds of stuff. Anything from the library. You can also this red this little timer. You can set what time. Um, and. So yeah, you can set what time that it needs to be in, and Lindsay, I see your question, so just one minute. You can do polls, and that's all I'm going to say for right now, we'll come back to it later. Assignments, so teachers can do assignments and students get a turn-in box. Teachers can grade the assignments right in Edmodo. They can create, quiz, create and give quizzes. All of that goes into the grade book. Teachers can give badges, as I said. Students can say how they like different lessons. There's a calendar. I know I'm flying through. We've already talked about library and sharing folders and communities. And then the other thing that we didn't talk about today is there's a bunch of apps, um, different learning activities and learning games. 
that you can, some are free and some cost money, but you can assign them to your students and then they can work on them right inside Edmodo. So Learn Zillion is a great one for, um, for the Common Core. It's free and teachers can assign things to their students right in Edmodo. I already talked about help and two ways you can get help. Here's how you get started. Got to the end very quickly. Okay, so um, Lindsay's asking for a question on the notes, so I'm going to pull the notes over here. So I shared these notes, maybe. No, that didn't work. Sorry. I shared these notes over here, and right here it says instructions for getting started. And so this has the information about creating your Mount Vernon Edmodo account and your school code that you use the first time you get started. And then here are some groups that have already been set up. Um, so if you're any of those groups, you might want to join one of those groups once you've created your account. As I said, you can create your own groups. So maybe your PLC wants to create a group or something like that. And looks like those got put in there twice. So right there in the notes, and the notes are in the email that I sent, and they are also um, here in the in the um, chat window. There's a link to the notes. Also in the notes, you'll see there's a there's a link to the reflection form and the presentation slides that I've been flying through today, and then the archive where the video will be um, archived on the website. These are some really nice. Um, little quick guides that say, you know, if you're an early elementary teacher, how do you get started with Edmodo and so on, some really great ones. And then these two are some really great ideas of how teachers are using um, Edmodo. So a lot of great stuff to look at. And I can find my way back to my presentation. Maybe I can, maybe I can't. Let's see, where did it go? hiding somewhere. It's lost. Okay, so I'm just going to say that we're done right now. Does anybody else have any questions? Um, okay, I hear, what's the difference between groups and communities? Um, groups are things that are set up by individual teachers. The communities are, are bigger, broader communities. You have community for the Mount Vernon School District and then your school that, you're, um, that you work at. Um, and then the groups can be started by anybody. The communities are set up by Edmodo. So a lot of publishers have communities and then there's like a math one and a social studies one. And where are the notes? And then Jamie asks where these notes are. And we found it in the email. Okay, cool. All right, any other questions? We will definitely have more um, on Edmodo. Maybe when you fill out the reflection form, if you tell what you'd like more of in Edmodo um, training, let me know and we can look at one specific thing, like groups and nothing else in a session. So this was just kind of a quick overview. Any other questions before I stop recording? All right, you guys have a wonderful day, and I and make sure to join in next week and see our stars share what they're doing with Google Docs. Uh, Denise, the notes are in um, an email that I sent out probably at about two thirty today. So uh, and then also they're in that chat box.